Now, a lot of Elm tutorials and functional programming in general doesn't really cover logging because from a functional programming perspective, logging is a side effect. Adding text and creating things in places you can't see is considered a side effect because it can do a lot of nasty things like do I.O. without telling you and having return values. But I feel like it's super useful coming from a procedural imperative and object-oriented programming background to see how my code's working, to see the flow of data. It helps me visualize and learn the architecture. So let's go ahead and do that to show you how your message is triggering this method. And we use our first let statement. So first we'll import debug. And you don't have to worry about exposing anything. I usually just say log on purpose. So we'll expose log. And log is lo just like console.log in JavaScript or print in Python. But it has a return value. You do not have to use it, but you still have to acknowledge that it's there. We'll say let in in. The cool thing about the let keyword in Elm is that you can write procedural code here. So you can do whatever you want. You can say like A equals 1 and B equals 2 and log message equals log yo. Hey. And then after that, this is where your Elm code goes. So any expression over here, this is what actually returns the value from the function. But up here, you can do whatever you want and create variables and whatnot. And this is where I create things. But most of the time, I use it for logging. So let's go ahead and open the browser console here. I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can actually see the value. Let's increase our GUI too, shall we? So now when you reload and you click the button, you can see, yo, hey, down here. Let me zoom that in for you. And so this is what's great about recognizing, okay, when I click the button, it calls the update message model. And if you want to see what those things are, we can even log those out. They have nice little metadata attached to these things that only happen in a non production compile mode, so we can log it out. And because I do this a lot, what I'll end up doing is go log one, or useless one, or useless two, log two, and we'll log out our model. And so you can see every time we log, it'll print out our model, which is 52, right? And the message add, and we can keep clicking it. And it'll keep printing it out, and it keeps returning the same, every single time, the same model. So nothing's actually changing. 